Hello there, great person, and welcome back to this read through of the Wheel of Time. I'm back, and yeah, last last weekend I had a wedding, not mine, so but a friend of mine is uh, she got wed, uh, she got married. I was there, so that's why there was no new chapter readings. And um, yeah, so I've been to Paris for the past four days, so now I'm back and uh, everything will be normal again i will have more time as well i hope so um i will start editing my witcher reactions next week so i've got season one already recorded but i haven't edited them so i will edit them next week i hope we will start that as well um and i also read dune children of dune on my trip to paris and back a bit and i'm like a quarter through the book and I will probably not do, I mean, I will not do a live reading there because um, it's harder to understand and I have more problems with the sentences and stuff like that. So it's probably not that entertaining, but I will do a review probably at the end of the month um, of Dune, Children of Dune and what I thought there. So anyway, let's get into this uh, and uh, let's start with chapter 31. Play for your supper. Let's see where we go today. Okay, so we are with Rand. That's good. We haven't been with him for a while and let's see where he goes. Okay, so they are on the road and it's like dusty and um, apparently they met a farmer who gave them a scarf and I think the way I read it here we're gonna see what happened there but yeah, it's like feels a bit like they are out of luck a bit and, and they don't know what to do really and I mean they lost Thome. So this is the first chapter after we lost Thome, even though I don't think he's dead. But we never know. We, we don't know yet. And um, let's just see what they did with uh, on the road until now. Oh, interesting. So it's just a little little dialogue. So the farmer said, yeah, you're on the run. I see that. I don't know what you're running from because he probably feels deep down that it's like something dark and bad. And he might even think it's like robbers or muggers or I don't know what. But in the end, he says, yeah, I don't want to know. If I don't know, I can't talk about it. And uh, my family is safer. And uh, yeah, but he still gave them scarves, apparently. Yeah, yeah. So it's like he says, they, they, they are from my boys. But we have more than two scarves, obviously. I mean, not that obviously. I don't know how poor they are. But um, yeah, and he says, hard times, take it. You don't know me, go away. And yeah, but what a kind man. What a very kind man, even though, you know, probably helping people on the run is always dangerous as well. So if you do it like, um, and I'm not sure, I will probably get this wrong, but you know, Anne Frank, the, the, the Jewish girl that uh, ran away and she was caught and she died in the, um, you know, where place from the bad people of my country from a hundred years ago, you know, the, the brown. <laughs> Um, and, and she was, they hit her, so they, you know, they, 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 she hit, uh, I think on a French farm. I'm not sure though. It might, I, I might get this completely wrong. And, uh, yeah, she, I think she hit on a French farm or something with an old couple and they helped her. And in the end they were discovered. And I think the couple was shot as well. So ugly, but, or in this, um, yeah, whatever. You know what? But it, you get my point, right? It's like helping people that run away. Like, like today, if, if you run away in a country where you're, where people are searching for you and the government has the control and um, you help these people, you, you set yourself up for, um, for prison as well or worse. And um, that's heroic, I think. Standing up for, you know, people that are on the run. If they are on the run from, you know, like something really bad. I mean, if they are to run from the police because they ended 15 people or so, you shouldn't obviously <laughs> probably help them. But you know, you get my point, you know, it's, it's like, and it's one of the few things that people can still do even though their country might be poisoned. You know, it's like there are poisoned countries um, have been all, all through history. You know, if your country gets poisoned, like you get, you get people that tell you what to do, what to eat, whatever, you know what I mean? And, and it's like, and, and, and if you stand up like in the open, you get just sent to prison or worse. But this is one of the things you can do to like still try to uphold values that are humane. But so long, long story short, he's a good man, this farmer, and he's a hero. 
That's what I wanted to say. Sorry for the long tangent. I see. So so it's like they're on this and, and they are obviously hiding and they're on the road and they don't want to be seen, but it's it's so arid that dust like is good because uh, it's arid and dust is good because they see people arriving from the distance, you know, and if it's if it's raining, they don't see people arriving from the distance. So they have a harder time to uh, go unnoticed. But um, if it's not raining, you know, it's it's like uh, there is dust cloud like from horses. OK, and so they now were in the bush and um, militia men, I think, rode past. So people with weapons. Um, yeah. I wonder if that's because something something else happened, like Loghain is perhaps close, like the, the prisoner transport, you know, or perhaps the Trollocs attacked an area, or perhaps something else is going on, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's a bit funny. It says here, Matt snarled silently like a cornered badger, squinting ab above his scarf, so he's compared to a badger. <laughs> Just, just for your information, I just love, love this. Badgers are very important in the story. I get it. And the dagger is starting to possess him even more because it says here, of late, Matt seemed to forget he had a bow, because he always clings to the dagger when there is danger coming. And yeah, I wonder where this goes because in the show it was a bit weird, and I know the actor left. That's perhaps because it was a bit weird as well in the end. But yeah, let's see, let, let's see what happens to Matt. And I'm pretty sure the what was his name? The the strange dude in Shadow Logoth, um he's in the dagger probably now with him. I think he wants more death. Sorry. I also wonder if something happens because uh, it seems that they think they are being hunted by men and not by Trollocs, you know? That's Yeah, yeah, okay, I understand. So they are um being Cautious because they think there might be a shade riding down the road, and then they just like when they see a rider, they just go into the bushes. I I mean I get that, but I don't know. They 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 saw that it were, was men on the horses, and they were still cautious. So something might have happened. Yeah. So the dark one has rent marked apparently, and um, he now knows that Tam is probably not his biological father, but he yeah. It's like it settles in slowly. Oh, interesting. Matt um, and Rand don't seem to dream as well. So is this the time when Perrin also did not dream about the Dark One? And he, he thinks he'll never see home again, yeah. But something is fishy here. Is the Dark One like taking a break? It's currently like on vacation? Okay, now Rand apparently suggested to Matt, yeah, let's just sell the dagger. I mean, it's gold. We'll get us some money. And Matt's like, no, I'm possessed now. Yeah, now they're arguing because Matt then says, yeah, why don't you just sell your father's sword? And then, and then Rand says, are you an idiot? It's my father's sword. He gave it to me. And this dagger, you just found it by uh, in this cursed city and you could just take out that ruby and sell it and we could just get a taxi cap. <laughs> To, to Tavalon with meals and sleep and everything. What are you doing, mate? Yeah, and... and But yeah, Matt gives a good reason, actually. So he says, yeah, what, what, what are they going to pay us with? Chickens? What are you going to do? We won't get the money. And if, if, if we got the money from someone that had it, they would be so suspicious of us and they would probably think we stole it. And they make up again. So yeah, they are very good friends, those two. I really like their friendship. Yeah, I really like this stuff. So it's like they're really on a long journey and it's a hard journey. In the show, it was just like they were suddenly there. They teleported to Tavalon. <laughs> and I, I also like that he's, again, an honorable man because he approaches farms where he wants to stay in daylight. He goes there openly to let them know, hey, I'm coming. Can I stay here? If he can't stay there, he's just gonna leave again. It's like very honorable, you know, and very honest. Yeah. So they sometimes get, yeah, um, 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 hunted away by dogs anyway, which is, yeah, I mean, I understand it. 
kind of. And um yeah, but so it's like like in the show, they sometimes like chop wood or whatever and do little chores to get a place to sleep. And um yeah, but now he wonders how fast is the murder is it, is it uh, is it catching up to us and let's see what he thinks. Yeah, I also wonder that how, how fast is the murder like if it's moving in the shadow, it seems to be quick, but it's on a horse, why why is it riding a horse? Why is it not just like sliding through every shadow? I don't know. And now they're at a farm where man thinks the farmer's gonna kill them in the night. Great. Ah, uh, okay. And Matt looked at him like, and the farmer says, "Oh, I forgot. Our four very strong, very big sons are coming. I'm sorry, I forgot. Better go away." And then at least they gave the, gave them uh, something to eat. Yeah, that was stupid. But I think it was because Matt looked at him so angrily. Why, mate? He's so possessed. He's accursed. He's accursed. I hope he gets well. So they have been hunted away or driven away before because of Matt, I think, because Matt looks so weird at them, if I if I get this correctly. So now we are at the Grinwell farm. Let's see what happens here. Oh, and now we meet Elsie. Is Elsie a dark friend? I don't know. And Elsie seems to have a liking for rent. Heron would know how to handle <laughs> Yeah, obviously. I love that it's like always the other one would know how to handle it. They all have no no clue. It's very very good. Okay, Matt's Matt Matt eases up when children are around. So it's like it might remind him of home of his ch uh, sisters. And um seems to be that or did does he have sisters in the book i don't really remember i have to be honest i will look it up later but yeah but anyway matt is a child friendly person i mean so his the true matt comes through more when there are children around and not more depth oh and now they're like doing gleeman's work to the grim worlds grin worlds that's actually quite cute why don't they sell themselves as glee men? I mean, they both could like say, yeah, we're glee men. Then you want glee men stuff and we tell you stories and you give us a meal. Why don't they do that? Is it because that reminds them of Tome? I mean, it probably would work better than them working and being weirdos like mad. Okay, so it's getting weird because Elsie obviously has a crush on her. Ooh, what's gonna happen? Oh, now, now they sleep in Elsie's room. This is gonna go so horribly wrong. I don't. I get a really bad feeling. Oh God! Thank God! It, nothing happened. Oh, <laughs> it was so weird. That situation was so bad. I thought she would like come in the night and sneak there. And oh my God! But nothing happened. Just like the next sentence, it's like on the next day on the road. <laughs> well written. <laughs> Very good. Nicely done. That was very good. I was so anxious that someone would... Yeah, that's... Yeah. What, what, a, what, what a great part of writing. And now they, they plan on performing an ins. Okay. I mean, fine. Yeah. Yeah, now they just do that. <laughs> Why didn't they do it before? I mean, I, I feel it is perhaps also a bit, even though it is not said in the book, but it might be a bit because they want to, like, not dis dishonor Thom and they hope he will be back and... And now they like take on his his place in inns like like the Gleeman. They are now Gleeman in, in, in the making. Yeah, and the innkeeper tried to talk them into staying as well again. Yeah, yeah, fine. Oh, what a what, what a cliffhanger. Ren began to think their problems were over till they reached Camlin. But then came the four kings. This reminds me of Dark Souls. I hate the four kings, such a shit boss. Such a shit boss. I mean, it's like I once. I mean, I when I hundred percent the Dark Souls, you know, you had to go through New Game Plus and New Game Plus Two to get all weapons, and you had to fight four kings on New Game Plus Two. It was horrible. I hated it. Stupid boss. 
Whatever, let's see what the four kings have in store for us and get to the next chapter. Chapter 32, Four Kings in Shadow. Yeah, I mean, it's like in the abyss. You only can go there if you have the crest of Vittorius. If you have defeated the puppy with the sword and whatever. I'm sorry. Enough talks for the references already. <laughs> this is also the first chapter where there was like... A at the end of the last chapter, there was foreshadowing and like a cliffhanger that was really cliffing the first time. And Four Kings is apparently a place and not an inn. Okay. Yeah, it's like a very run-down village, like dusty and, and bleak a bit. It feels a little bit bleak when I read the description of the village. Yeah, it seems to be a very hostile environment, hostile place. I don't know why. It doesn't even say it like it's they all... They almost got run over by, like, a, tr um, a truck, a cart. People don't look each other in the eye, so it also, that also sounds a bit fishy. So there are our mus musicians already in the inn, so they can't go there. I mean, fine. They, 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 that was bound to happen, that they get into a more crowded or, like, into a bigger village, so to speak, like a small town, perhaps. I mean, they, they have four inns, so it's a bigger place, more urban. Now we have a skinny innkeeper. Okay, Samuel Harker is the skinny innkeeper and he just hit his waitress. Because he's Richard Douchebag, I don't know. Okay, so they tried every inn and that's the last one. So there are four inns in Four Kings. There are weirdos there, and they are gonna, they are so gonna get marked. I don't know. Yeah, and again, the sword is very important to Rand because it's Tams and it's his father's, showing again that yeah, he cares for him so much. I love the relationship. I hope Tam comes into the story again later. Oh, they've got bouncers. Nice. Oh, those are probably the weird men. <laughs> Oh, and they actually managed to pull a large crowd into the inn. That's good. That is so great. <laughs> it's so funny. Like they, they, so they play the songs they know, and in ev like in every village, so to speak, it's another name that they have for the song. And but the tune, you know, it's the same, and reminds me so much of um, older languages. Like where I'm from, there's this like native language, so to speak. And it's different in every village you go to. So every village has their own version of it, and it's so funny. And it's like, like it's the same structure that's underlying it, but you know the the details are different. And it's here here a bit more extreme, but it reminds me of that. You know that that the songs are not the songs are not the 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 music is the same, the structure is the same, but people tell other stories to it along with it. So, you know what I mean? It's, I really like that. The bouncers are called Jack and Strom. Or in German, Jack and Strom. Which means uh, um, electrical current, so just, uh, or current. Uh, uh, Strom, uh, uh, Strom means a current. That's a German word. I, I, it's funny that he has so many German words for names. It's like, I, it's like calling someone pot or um, um, chair or like um chicken <laughs> it's so weird for me oh god and haki is like a, a chauvinist and he treats his waitresses like cattle that's so what a what a richard what an a-hole why, why are they staying i mean it's sometimes hard to get loose from someone like that i know it's very very terrible but jesus christ what an asshole sorry yeah, and he's eyeing their properties. Obviously, he's trying to mark them. Oh, and now there is a weirdo, like nobleman, coming in. Let's see what he's doing. And also, they try to get the food when everyone's still there, and they will just run away afterwards because they're gonna get mugged. It is a man that is familiar to them, but they don't know him, and he's just looking at them, and everyone's afraid of him. What a what a creepy dude! What's what's he gonna do? Now they are eating in the kitchen, and they plan on leaving after that, perhaps, I don't know. And um, now they listen to what the maids say, and the waitresses. 
Okay, so the weirdo just appeared and he went into every inn and just went out again. Okay, so Rand has an idea and let's see what he thinks. So that is a very wealthy man with a carriage of servants. How will Goda, who's that, what is that? It's written on the coach they use. Like, okay, so the guy is a white bridge merchant and he's perhaps looking for them. Perhaps to get them? I'm not sure. Okay, he might be a dark friend. Yeah, that's that's true. Okay, so they are like trapped because they can't get out without anyone noticing because they're the main act and uh, yeah, Goda is there and uh, the innkeeper Hake is there. So, I mean, it's bad. I'm not sure yet what Goda is. Perhaps he's a well-meaning man. I don't know. Perhaps he's like a very evil dude. Perhaps he's a dark friend. Let's see. Oh, and Rand forgot to put a, put away the sword, so it's still at the silt. And uh, Goda, or who is it? Yeah, Goda notices the heron, and he's a bit confused now. Goda was the last person in the room. Okay, let's see what, where this goes. Okay, now it's getting very tense because Haki isn't seeing. With the, with the, this is the lamp I'm holding, and I'm pretending to be Haki. Now, do you want to see your rooms where we can mock you? I will go with you. I don't know, it's so weird. That would have been... I mean, this whole scene alone for a show, that would have been perfect. Do this, everyone would have like been, Oh my god, what's gonna happen next? This is so eerie, so tense, what's going on? There are so many very tense scenes in the books and some just resolve like it's nothing happens and here something will happen because probably because it was foreshadowed in the last chapter you know but you know it's like very well done there are tense moments sometimes they just fall away like like they nothing happens but then there are tense moments like yeah okay so now they're in the room they tell him yeah leave the lamp here and He's, Hake is like weary because he saw the heron on the sword, so he's probably only going to do something when they are asleep, and yeah, they're probably just going to run out now. Yeah, what are they waiting for? Oh, now they push like little, um, little pieces of wood under the door so it can't be opened. That's very clever. Okay, so there's, uh, so the window is barred by iron bars. That's tough luck, so they're trapped. Is he gonna use the the one power again? Oh, how will Goda is in front of the door now? Let's see. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> he's a dark friend. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine, he's a dark friend. You know that as well as I. I saw it in your eyes. I know what you are perhaps better than you do. I can feel it coming from you in waves. Already you halfway belong to my master. Yeah, he's great, great, fantastic, great. So they are probably gonna be dreadlords, says the dark friend. What does that mean? What are those dreadlords? I mean, I've heard it before. Weren't they the uh, the old um? Chiefs of the army, so he thinks they are going to be dreadlords. That's what the Dark One told him, or he didn't tell him. He assumes it because that's what what the legend says that the dreadlords will wait when the Dark One returns. And the promise is everlasting life, which makes sense because he wants to destroy time. So it's in line with that. Yeah, and now Rand is very wish, wishing very hard to get out. So like. <laughs> He blew away part of the wall, which is absolutely badass. Yeah, okay, so he called down lightning to strike at the bar so it exploded the wall. Great job, Rand. It's just the lightning, yeah, it, it killed every one of Goaty's men, and probably Goat as well, I don't, I'm not sure, but just BAM! Yeah, okay, they got, they got away. That was... That was an interesting chapter. <laughs> Really did like that one. It was very tense. I mean, the whole chapter was just tense. 
it was just like we knew from the start that something was going to happen because the last chapter told us and um, then everything like it was so eerie all the time and it got more and more and more tense and in the end Rand not realizing what he did was just called lightning down and he still thinks it's luck let's see what his the effects of using the power will be this time I'm I'm looking forward to that actually Chapter 33 the dark waits. Let's see what, what waits in the dark, or the dark itself waits. Oh, it's again a rent. So today we are with Rand and Matt for all three chapters. I kind of like that. I like them. I like them again. So there was this one chapter where they were a bit too immature. But I really do like them. I really do like both of them. Matt is like, eh, what are you going to do? But I mean, he's cursed. What's he going to do? Not really his fault. Because uh, when he took the devil in a dagger in this situation, he did it to protect himself against uh, Mordor. So they, it seems to be a bit more normal now, like they are on a card again, going through villages. So they obviously played again and um, made this farmer happy. That's nice. So it's like it calmed down a bit after that weird stuff. So yeah... Still, in the, in the last chapter, it's like, it's so weird. So, I think, I think we will have to talk down the line about what it means to destroy the wheel. Because does it mean, like, something new emerges? Because it's not nothingness, but eternity. Though they can be the same, so, so weird. Yeah, whatever, just, just a thought. I've just thought about it. Yeah, because, <laughs> just thinking... The dark friend sounded not evil. You know, it's like... It's like he thinks he's just seeing things differently, which he might just be doing, and he might have been lied to. And obviously he has the people with him, and he, like, has goons, and it's weird, and that's why he's dangerous and eerie. But from the way he talked, he was a bit like a maniac, but he still seemed reasonable. You know what I mean? It's weird. So he says, yeah, my what I want to achieve is good for me. I see no problem with what I want to achieve. And others should do too. And if they don't, yeah, let's end them. I mean, that's the bad part about him, but yeah. Okay, so the lightning, like, um, blinded a mad bit, or it, it hurt his eyes. And Rand is just thinking, okay, this is the light helping us. So... He like believes in the light being sentient a bit or like the light being the creator. I don't know. It feels like he can bargain with it. Okay, now they get to an area where the white cloaks are more approved. Oh no, they're not white cloaks. They are queen's guards. Interesting. Yeah, we know there is a queen in that area that uh, this, this, this area belongs to, I, I believe. So... Uh, queen scars. I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this makes more sense. So the white cloaks are not necessarily liked here. We don't. We don't know. Yeah, and he's re the 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 farmer there with. He's repeating this. Um, things have changed from the old days. In the old days, the queen scars were more and more um, spread across the country, upholding the law like police. And now they're not. And and. Um, it's so weird that you don't know, recognize them. Not like the old days, like, yeah. Something is changing. Change is coming. A big change is coming in the country. We see it through the winter. We see it through the people and things like this. It's like change is gonna happen. Oh, interesting, yeah. So the Queen of Andor. It's, so they live in a district called Andor. Yeah, Andor. Okay, it's the central part of the of the of uh, of this uh, this continent. So the central part of the continent, at least from the map, is Andor, and two rivers is part of Andor. But they are so far off that they don't really care. They handle their own business. They don't need no queen. I don't need no queen and no king. We've got the mayor. I'm sorry. It's, it's you know, I get it. Why why? Why have, like, a higher power if everything runs smoothly on the local level? You don't need it. I mean, you need it when there is an army coming and attacking you or whatever, you know what I mean? But if everything runs smoothly on the local level, why? 
because like a queen or or a king or a ruler would um you have that to like streamline the country if you need to streamline it because that might be the case but that seems to be not be the case here because everything just works and it works well like the the village they came from was perfect village so to speak no no violence though that could have been from the manatheran blood like no no death no killing it's like a good village so they don't need that from the queen so all they need is like protection against other countries that might invade them you know but yeah interesting never thought about that so what's what is the ruler for you know to protect the, the law and and the society and um yeah protect that and to to like adjust things to perhaps redistribute money to other areas that need it more or so but in this world it doesn't seem to be necessary because everyone lives on their own every village and they all make ends meet and everything is running smoothly as well as i can tell i mean we've seen many villages now it all runs okay there's never been a problem with things or like if, if there would be a drought or like the winter is quite long they might have problems there and then the queen might have to do something you know what i mean it's what what are kings and queens and rulers for never really thought about that actually so first time here <laughs> thanks book but i might think about that more in the future it's an interesting question i obviously i won't be able to answer it here and i will probably not even be able to answer that at all because it's so complicated and i'm not an expert in this so what do you think rulers are for like in let's take this world here not ours just like let's take this world tell me in the comments what do you think rulers are for here in this world what do they do other than the things perhaps i i said perhaps i i probably missed a lot of stuff because i don't really think about the structure of fantasy worlds like this a lot at least i did not before i started this series of reading things and really thinking about every sentence you know what do you think let me know I'm I'm uh, because you always have very nice takes on things, so I'm I'm curious. Yeah, yeah, it says here again. It says here if there was a problem between two villages, the village may may have saved, uh, solved it because they choose the most competent people to, for the jobs, as they did in uh, Emansfield. So works. And again, great bit of writing as well. Like just. Some nights right past and you get a lot of history about the country just because Rand thinks about it and how it was back home and stuff like that. Very nicely done. Yeah, and now uh, the farmer says, yeah, you want to stay at my place if your friend wants to get healthy again? Because Matt's obviously, I mean, <laughs> he was almost hit by lightning and got his eyes burned, I think, or whatever. And um, yeah, and Matt is suspicious again, yeah. Yeah, so they pee, pee on the farmer's hospitality by saying how do you know what a dark friend looks like you might be one you know and then the farmer the farmer was really kind to them he says like yeah i real recognize you you are running away from something come on to my farm it's like a bit away they won't find you there so um and Matt says how do we know you're not a dark friend and then Rand looks at him like after the farmer leaves Matt Rand looks at him like Dude, what the frick are you doing? And she says, like, I'm sorry. I don't know why I think that. Because you're possessed, mate. And Rand says there are some there are still good people, and he's right. Okay. Now there's a break and we get back to the night when they ran away from the um four kings. That's confusing, what? <laughs> yeah, and they are running away, and Matt says, Will you leave me behind now that I'm blind? Or if I stay blind, and Ren says, No, you're my friend. And what what about Goldie? Yeah, he's probably dead. He has to be dead, yeah. And now he now Rand is dreaming again. <laughs> so this is a bit confusing, I have to admit. Okay, and something was waiting for him. And that's what ah, that's what the last paragraph ended uh, page like before the break. It ended with something is not chasing us, it's waiting. And now he says again, something is waiting in this deserted Four Kings version in his dream. Oh, and in his dream, there's Goaty. Okay, and she sees him like a corpse. He's burnt, and his skull's half gone, so to speak, and now he's turning around. So many horror scenarios here. Yeah, that would have been great in a, in a TV show, you know, if they ever made one. That would have been so good to do that in a TV show. 
Oh, and Balsamon is not talking to him. Yes, he's dead, but he found you, so I will reward him. Eternal life in a zombified body. Okay, and uh, Balsamon says, Yeah, you will be mine, and my dark friends will hate you for that, because you will, you will be the, the thing they want to be. And then Rand says, No, I belong to myself alone, which is great, but I don't know if he can, like, hold out against this dude. Yeah, and it's again, his face is like this fiery thing, this weird thing, like a, a being from another plane. Why did they do the CGI alien? I'm so pissed about that now. I'm, you know, it started like, like when, when, when Balsamon first came, it was like, yeah, okay, I know what we were going for in the show. But now I really, I really start to get what he is a bit. I feel, I might be wrong, you know, but if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but... The way I feel him more and more is like a Lovecraftian, otherworldly god entity thing. You know what I mean? And that's what he's here. And it's like he's this strange, weird properties he has. It's not a, just a dude with glowing eyes. It's just one of the metaphors they used in the beginning for him. Like, it's... Or whatever. You know, it was like his, his eyes were holes and they were infinitely dark or whatever. It's so... They could have done such a a lot a lot more with him the grave belongs to me easier dead but better alive better for you youngling the living have more power in most things and Godi is a dog for him in his mind like a dog hounding someone the, a hunting dog you know and now he's gonna reward Godi is it gonna be horrible or, or horrible let's see yeah, and it seems here that 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 whatever Balsamon tells his dogs is a lie. Because he says, I will reward you. And then then God is like and in the last moments he, he understands that everything was a lie and it's pure horror that he sees and crumbles away into dust. I have turned a hundred thousand words to dust. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what voice I would have given Balsamon in the show. I probably would have given him like a, a, a dark side voice, something like that. Or like a changing voice, you know, like many people's. I don't know. Yeah, now he shot a fireball in the dream at Ren's face and marked him. And... But he already said I marked you before that, didn't he? I'm a bit confused. Anyway, now he's definitely marked. And um, yeah, and again, the eye of the world will never serve you. Again, this, 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 this saying, what does that mean? What does it mean? I want to know. You know, it, it's like th this, I have to go through this to know. So sad. But not really sad because it's a great book and I love every page of it, but you know what I mean? Oh, and in Matt's dream, the Balsamon took his eyes. That's bad. So they go around the first village they see. Okay, so Matt starts to see again. Okay, that's good. I mean, we knew that already from the beginning of the chapter, but it's good to see it again. Oh, a farmer is there and he's taking them and the farmer's like... Everything is going wrong for him. I'm sorry for the farmer. He's a, he seems to have a kind heart anyway, and he wants to, he wants, just wants to talk to someone. So sad. Yeah, and the winter is like, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, and here, the queen should do something. Light illuminator, he said. That's what I mean. The queen has to step in in dangerous situations like this. Like dangerous because, yeah, starvation is, is up the road if you continue traveling the road they are i'm sorry that they made no sense but you know the the winter if it stays they are all gonna starve if they don't think of that something what now i'm confused it's the guy that gives them the scarves what what wait What? I'm so confused. What is going on? What did I miss here? 
It's the man from the beginning of this greeting session. Ah, I see there was a flashback. I did not. I'm so sorry that I was that stupid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I understand. So this is... I'm not sure if I'm very, very dumb or if it was intended this way. Because I just went back to the chapter where, where we already had this. Like, we know that they got the scarf and they treasured it a lot and stuff like that. And there is this line when, when they are like the dust and the, they are like hiding from riders and stuff like that. And, and, um, and, um, uh, not after us, Matt said, maybe, maybe, and Ren had no idea which, which way he meant it, but he nodded, maybe it had not begun like this, their journey down the Camelon Road. Ah, okay, yeah, I'm stupid, so it was my fault, I'm sorry. For a long time after leaving Whitebridge, Ren. Yeah, yeah. I think, I don't know. I'm so, so sorry if I'm just stupid, but uh, it had not begun like this. Their journey down the Camden Road for a long time after leaving Whitebridge, blah, blah, blah. And uh, uh, they always thought, oh, it's homecoming. And then it says, no, hope failed as the days passed. And then it says, there was considerable traffic on the road, wagons and carts. Okay, 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 yeah, I, I think I, I just missed the, f the flashback we were in. Yeah, I think I just forgot that we were in the flashback. That's so stupid. But, so, because I'm stupid, this was very, this, this was a very big surprise. I really do like it. So, you probably did not like, like it that much, this revelation, but it, it, for you it was probably just like, okay, now they're back where we started. But... Yeah, so anyway, if I was a good man, I'd offer a couple of lads like you more. But he's a good man, you know, and, and then... And Rand says, we ne uh, you are a good man, the best we've met in days. Yeah, what a good, good man. So the... And that's also so great. So this, this is the guy I called a hero. I will call him a hero again because he's got so many problems currently. Like his cows don't give milk. He's got no crops. Like everything is going bad for him and he still gifted them the scarves. What a lad. What a, what a great guy. Mal. He's, he's, he's called Mal. Let's, 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 uh, what's his name? Alpert Mal. Alpert Mal. Alpert Mal. Alpert Mal is the hero. Yeah, so now they are approaching a village again, and Matt's eyes are still burned, and so he can't juggle, and Rand is, I think, considering pay, just paying for the rooms. Yeah, and it's it's very expensive to stay at the inn, and um, yeah, let's see. And yeah, and prices are just rising because it gets worse and worse with the winter and the food and stuff like that, I think. Yeah, and they paid it. Yeah, okay. They, st they almost have nothing left, I think, but yeah, they paid it. Yeah, and yeah, and okay, so they, they wake up and the next morning nothing happened and Matt's eyes are getting better and better. That's good. Yeah, and he thinks of Moraine and uniting with her, uh, reuniting with her uh, in Camelin, like... And I have to admit right now, I almost forgot they traveled together because it's so long gone, like, it's like in my mind, it's like, okay, that was ages ago, now they're on their own, and I really do like this. This feels like a very big journey they are all on. I really do like that. It. It's Good feeling I get from these chapters. Okay, now there's a strange dude joining them. Let's see what he says. Well, a young lad. He's called Python. Okay, so he heard about the four kings and he wants to talk to them. And he's so suspicious. And his friends made him do this? I don't know. Oh, he really is a dark friend. I thought he was just a random idiot. <laughs> he just punched, but Rand punched him in the face. Yeah, okay, and now they're running away, and it was such a weird situation. Yeah, and now there are rumors spreading about the dark friends. That's so weird. Yeah, and again, the queen is named again. The queen has to do something, they say. Yeah, and he always... Rand starts doubting that he will ever get home, and I wonder to because it's coming up again and again and again. Will he ever return to Eamon's Field? Yeah, and they go into an inn again, hoping that they can, like, go by being Gleeman again. Oh, and Loganus in Camelon. So they will meet Loganus in Camelon. I like that. 
Yeah, and people are fighting over whether Loghain's the real dragon. Obviously, he's not because he was already caught. And he says, that's what's causing trouble. People who, do, who don't stay where they belong. That's interesting. And what about people who don't belong? Should they move? I don't know. Okay, so they are being thrown out. Why? Because of the sword? Yeah, and it's the, 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 the sickness from the casting that is taking Rand currently. Like, he's getting really sick. And Matt is just saying, yeah, okay, he doesn't want that. Let's just, uh, let's just go into the horse's room. <laughs> so this time it was not like him getting all, oh, I'm the best, I'm the coolest, oh, yeah. It's like he just breaks down. Yeah, okay, okay, so the inn master, he took care of them in a way. He doesn't, he doesn't want people to know that there's a sick man there because they might think they can, you know, get the sickness as well, but he let him into his uh, stable and uh, he gave them something to eat, which is also very kind of him. And yeah, now he's hallucinating that Baal is there. Yeah, and now let's see what he's hallucinating. So he's hallucinating all the time. Okay. And, and, and when this is, why did you leave us? Why? We're all dead. And Tom and, and Moraine, he's hallucinating about all of them. Wow. Again, and what answer will find you first, eh? Red, maybe black. Black Arja, again, it's mentioned again, and I'm so sure that there's no black Arja in the show. I think... I still think the Black Arja are a Sedai that broke off, so to speak, a, a splinter fraction, whatever, rogue fraction. Because it's come up twice now. This is suspicious, I don't know. Perhaps it's nothing. Okay, so now he goes through several people at Min. Min is mentioned again, and they are gonna. Sh I, I'm ship still shipping them. And um, now Tam is coming. Let's see what we have. Oh, uh, Tam does not say a word. And, and, and Ren's like, who am I? Who am I? Yeah, and now Matt is waking him up. Great guy. So Matt really, really cares for Rand, even though he's been so stupid. But he wasn't stupid. So if I think about it now, so he put, pulled out the dagger to just like a reaction to defend himself against the weirdo, and now he has it. Okay, and there's a woman. Eight, same age as Anaeve. Oh, is she an Asada? Is she a green Arja? Green, the pale green silk of her dress shimmered. She fingered a heavy golden necklace. Isn't that the... Doesn't um, Moraine also have a heavy golden necklace? And she just wanted to look for her horse. Are you ill? Yeah, and she says, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at you. Let's see. And she has a face like emotionless. Okay, what... He just attacked him. Why is everyone attacking them? I mean, I know why, but... And the dagger is like a dark coated blade, uh, a, da a dark dagger, something like this. Okay, okay. So Matt says, I'm gonna enter, and Rand says, no, you're not. And he says, she's a dark friend, and, she, and Rand then says, we are not. That's quite powerful as well. Yeah, and, and she's spouting the same stuff that goats spouting and they are like um working against each other to like be the best best employer of, of the dark uh, dark one they are contesting and they're having contests so to speak and Matt is like haha you can't even find two farm boys you are so stupid <laughs> yeah and the power of fire and heat is the dark one's power as well but men can also wield it Though it's probably another, like it's, it's perhaps it's a part of the dark one because he's like hellfire in a way. Like a piece of the dark one lives in the dagger in a way or whatever. At least they didn't kill her. Yeah, now, now they're with Kinch again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that was the chapter. I kind of forgot who Kinch is because there were so many names. Who is he? from the beginning let me see i think he's the one from that 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 told them about the queen's guard because they're one village away from Kemlin, aren't they i think they are yeah yeah okay i i i'm sorry it took some time so 
Yeah, that was chapter 33. So we are like getting these weird flashback things that I'm I'm getting confused by. I hope you don't mind. I'm, you know, I have to see a bit where everything fits, but I think I get it. So we started it uh, with, with Matt and the scarf, and uh, then we got to know why he wore the scarf and stuff like that. And then we got, um, got a bit forward to Master Kinch in the end, shortly before Camelon to see Loghain. And then we went back again to after her, the assault on the in the inn. Okay, that's interesting. So I'm going to now talk to my friends about this. And uh, let's see what we say. And uh, yeah, if uh, you like this, consider liking, subscribing and ring the bell. And uh, for other content, more will come soon, finally. And uh, I will see you now. Hello there, great person. I'm back. And we just talked it through. Um, yeah, we really did enjoy these chapters. They were the most tense ones, we thought. But um, yes, <laughs> it was quite funny. So, you know, when I said, oh, I didn't understand this flashback thing and I had to look it up, you know, I went back and I saw where it was and where it started. They didn't even realize there was one. <laughs> so it was very confusing to us and we talked a lot about the timelines, where to piece them together. And um, in the end, we talked a lot about the, the beginning of chapter 31 and the, this passage where they are already with the scarves and he remembers the farmer, you know, and... And I really think, and... I think that was filler. I, that was the first part in, hind, uh, in retrospect that I did not like because it didn't fit into the story. Um, I, so I, I don't really know what he wanted to do with it, writing that. So what we suspect though, and it, for us it wasn't transported well, but I'm uh, very curious to see your thoughts on this because we were really unsure as well if we missed something or so. So in the beginning they are like on this road and they are a bit, um, yeah, they are trying to not go onto the road because they're afraid of stuff. And um, what I thought happened, of course, at that time when I read it the first time was, yeah, the murderer is behind them and stuff like that, but it was not. So the, the thing is, we would have liked it if in those one and a half pages, it would have been made very, very clear that something else that beyond tomes, let's say disappearance, that something else that was really bad happened to them. And it was like a bit in the subtext of the uh, of those uh, paragraphs, a bit, you know, like they didn't really trust the people coming. But what really would have been made this better, in my opinion, and I think the others agreed, is when uh, would have been when it was made very clearly that something very bad had already happened as well. So you knew something was going to happen that was very bad like people random people try going after you that appeared uh, that um um show themselves to be dark friends like you know because that was something very very genius about these chapters you saw the different kinds of dark friends and you really got the impression that they are like um everyday people they are all a bit more wealthy so they are probably drawn to power and and riches but uh, all in all they were like everyday people like this the Pieter guy who was a real like he was he was he was noodle what was he you know what so everyone could be a dark friend and also it's not like the murderer anymore it's not this mythical creature from the stories that might appear it's just people you know if the dark one didn't exist in this world and there were dark friends who think there is a dark one like they could be cultists it's dangerous and that really drove home that there is more danger than mythical creatures like Murdral lurking in the story. Because Dark Friends have always been like um, 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 teased, but it's, I never have gotten the impression that they were dangerous before. And in these chapters, wow, they are so dangerous. And as well, the stupid Hacker uh, innkeeper, Hacker, I think it, his name was, I think, Haki, so the, the skinny um, innkeeper. It showed as well that there are bad people in the world, just bad people. They don't have anything to do with the Dark One. They're just bad people. And there are good people, like the farmer who gave them the scarves. You know, it was very, it made the world a more complex place again. It was very well written. And if the, the first 
few pages of these three chapters had introduced that, that they were now wary of people as well. You know, only that. They, that would have been okay. Nothing more. That would have been uh, all I needed. Like the, the, some thoughts like, but they were now wary of people as well because of X or something like that. And you knew, okay, something is going to happen. And then the next parts would have been even more tense because then they go to uh, the family with Elsie. And that was tense. And I would have been even more tense because I thought, what's going to happen? Are they like... Uh, is she going to sneak into their room and stuff happens and goes haywire and they are going to go after them or what is going to happen, you know? I would have gotten the impression that something very bad will happen. And then, like, uh, then there's the them going into inns and playing stuff and you think, okay, this is going to go wrong. And then in the end it says, and then there was four kings and you know, okay, now it's going to go down. That would have been very good. And I did not get that impression at all from these one and a half pages which just okay they were afraid of things like the murderer that's why they are not on the road okay and they are somehow covered in scarves and that's that was a nice guy they met okay that's everything and it was not everything i didn't even realize that and it's not in the text explicitly as well that matt's eyes are you know from the burns and we don't even know when exactly the scene takes place so we don't go back to it afterwards yeah i didn't like it as that as well so those one and a half pages are the first thing of the books I disliked. <laughs> so, um, but other than that, brilliant, brilliant chapters again. And um, I like the balsam and stuff. It gave more, uh, more, of, more depth into that, you know. And um, now they're in almost in Camelin, and we will see next time where that is. So, that was it from from us today. And uh, next. Um, we plan on doing five chapters because we will only be able to talk on Friday and we will do five chapters then and I will probably release them on Saturday or Sunday or whatever and um, probably Sunday again as always and yeah so I hope you will have a great week and see you soon and uh, take care of yourself. Bye.